there's been some transfer news, and it involves um, Callum Watkins, who has left Toronto Wolfpack, as has everyone these days, and it ended up at the uh, Salford Red Devils. And I guess the, the the main hope from this move is that uh, he can find the uh, the form that he had uh, not too long ago. Of course, the irony is that should Toronto be allowed back in the competition, they won't have any players. But first of all, happy birthday, Wales Rugby League. I think we should open the show by saying uh, whatever it is in Welsh, but thank you for all that you've done for the sport. I'm sorry we haven't always reciprocated that to you. Uh, the first international was Wales playing um, the the all gold. So... Um, Thank you, Wales. Thanks for all the wonderful players that you provided, and I have a very happy birthday. Which is nothing to do with Callum Watkins, other than he is going to be playing in red now. I um, think it's a brilliant signing, both for Salford and for Callum. Uh, I think they promoted it superbly with him going back home. Clearly, uh, a, a Mancunian played his first rugby for Langworthy Reds. Um, Leeds snapped him up when I think he was 12 because they'd, they'd seen that he was probably going to develop into something a little bit special. So it works for everybody. And and as you say, um, Salford gets a, a potential star player in, in, in a key position. Um, he comes back into the sport, which is great. And you would hope that the environment will be such that uh, with the arms that are clearly being put round him by the announcement, he gets back to his uh, his very best form. And, and Super League needs the star players. And uh, thought he was great uh, when he was summarising on Sky the other week where he almost pleaded for somebody to come forward and get him. And actually, probably this is the best option for him. And, uh, and, and good. Well done, Salford. An exciting come and get me play on the telly. Um, I, I see there, there was a race for his signing, according to the uh, press last night. With um, was it Hull KR and Rugby Union? Is that just Rugby Union, as in uh, any old agent will say Rugby Union are interested in my client? Come and sign him, please. Yeah, it's a little bit like that's probably the uh, the NRL interest. Every player in Super League has NRL interest, but um, I think as Bill said, it's, it's great for Salford. He's a local boy. Usually, you know, they, they lose their best local juniors. And obviously, they did lose him to Leeds when he was very young. But they've got him back now. And hopefully, he gets back to... He's obviously had a long break with no rugby league. So, by the time he plays next year, um, he should hopefully be back to his best. And, you know, I'm sure the fans will get around him. And, you know, he's still got... He's still relatively young. So, he should have a few years left in his in his legs. And, yeah, you have to do one know about Toronto, though, as Phil said. Um, with Blake Wall- Wallace going to lead for next year, Callum Watkins, if they are around and if they are in Super League or even in the Championship, they're going to basically gonna need to rebuild a, a whole new squad. Um, hopefully, now the sound is working, I'll press something, but uh, fingers crossed on that one. Thanks to uh, Carsten and Tim and Mr. Fozzie and Barnstonworth and Gary the Viking, who are watching... Uh, live this uh, evening on YouTube. So, so did, uh, they, did they miss that heartfelt happy birthday tribute to Wales? Because they couldn't hear it. <laughs> I, no, I think, I, I think they heard it. I think oh, so. I'm not saying it again. <laughs> I know somebody in Wales who would fall over if I did it twice. Uh, I'm hoping the, the echoes have now stopped. I realised that we had the audio on three times. You don't need it three times, just the ones. Um, so uh, Callum Watkins is in. Looks like uh, Luther Burrell, though, is on his way out. The uh, exciting signing from uh, Rugby Union last year. Well, it was exciting for a bit, but uh, I don't think it'd be fair to say um, Steve Price hasn't really known what to do with him, or I guess perhaps not even wanted him. The difficulty is, again, where was he going to naturally fit into that team? Because I think we all thought he would come as a centre and it, it seemed that the limited opportunities he got were more at second row. Um, the, I, I guess it would have been a great signing probably about three years earlier. Uh, it was always a tough ask for somebody over 30 to come and, and play play the game at the very highest level. Um, it it generated some publicity. It would have been nice to see him given a more of a run in the team. I think the writing was on the wall when Greg Inglis was signed by Warrington. I think he thought, well, hang on a minute. The, you know, Luther Burrell was supposed to be uh, a ready-made a player in that position, and and here they are getting GI, which which you know clearly GI is a is a is a big sell. Um, but yeah, maybe uh, Luther for Toronto start the uh, campaign now. They need, they need, they need to not repeat the same mistakes. Still, not 
not put money on players. This is roughly. Well, this is rugby league. We've been making the same yeah. mistakes for 125 years. No, I think I think the thing with yeah, Luther Brown, I mean, obviously, Steve Price has got to pick the team that he thinks is going to win games. He's either not proving it in training or he's not, you know, the games that he has played, he's not made a massive impact, has he? And I think it just shows how hard it is, not only at the elite level in rugby league, but to switch from rugby union. It's just, you know, I've interviewed Luther Brown a couple of times and he was saying about the, the fitness demands you know, and the cardio, he struggled, you know, to make that switch. And obviously, Wellington have got a very good team as it is. You know, maybe if he was at a, a lower-end team, he might get more game time. But, you know, I, I think it's good that he's not sort of just given a spot and said, here you go, play every week. You know, you've got to earn that spot. That's why it should be. Um, so maybe less signings for kind of marketing sake. But on that flip side, it's only his, is it half the wage or first year of the wage doesn't count towards the salary cap. So... You know, it's Simon Rand's money, and I guess if he wants to splash it um, and it doesn't unbalance their cap, then they go right ahead. I think the other issue is not having had reserve grade for all the reasons we've gone over. He, he didn't have chance to learn his trade. Yeah. Um, so even if he got to that right level of fitness, um, you know, we, you know, if I'm Steve Price and, I, and I've got no way of seeing him play or test him out and and you know this is where probably dual reg didn't didn't work as well because would he have got as much value you know playing in the in the championship he probably needed to see him playing in reserve grade and and hasn't had the chance to do that so uh yeah they've had to make a decision before uh, the dispensations run out and it looks as though we will be surplus to requirement which he, which is a shame we did get some good pr on the back of it there were some newspapers that uh, were prepared to take articles who wouldn't otherwise probably run a rugby league story and uh, no doubt we will talk about sbw's return uh, but i think he's been absolutely fantastic value for money and i don't care for camera focuses on him tying his shoelaces up before he goes out there uh, <laughs> You know, it is true that the stars sell, and Burrell in that in that instant when he his star shone when he came over was uh, was somebody who got us publicity we wouldn't otherwise have got. They should have, uh, should have sent him online to North Wales or to you know Cumbria, and that that would have been a real rude awakening from Twickenham in front of eighty thousand people to the North Wales Crusaders in League One. 